In today's video, what to do if you don't trust your coach. Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Sunday. Welcome to the video. This is Paul from Tampa and uh, ProPhysique.com had a wonderful weekend and I planned to do a video on that. We were down in South Florida uh, for the NPC Grand Prix and I had six amazing, wonderful clients who all made me so proud and I got footage. I tried to get some with this camera and I tried to get some on my Instagram stories. Um, but I'll do like a full recap video this week one day when I can put that footage together. Today is just about discussing what to do if you don't trust your coach. And uh, that's for a few reasons that I wanna bring up that topic and I'm gonna explain what I would suggest if that situation comes up. Um, I just wanna say thank you to everyone that I met yesterday. You know, I got to shake a lot of hands, talk to people. Clearly people are watching my videos, which is, um, it's, it's exciting for me because you know, you, you put these out and you don't really get a lot of interaction, personal feedback. But I actually met a lot of people and it was very nice for me to, you know, get that sense of, um, you know, benefit that you guys are receiving or at least enjoying. And so I want to talk about what a lot of the things I said that were said to me, a lot of questions were asked about other coaches practices and how coaches are doing things. And then to, to put the nail in the hammer, I got a direct message, which I'll post up here about someone and I won't put their name on here because I don't want to get them blasted or I don't want their coach who maybe watches these videos to get upset, um, you know, saying, Hey, what do you do if you don't trust your coach? And, and this is a very important conversation to have. Um, so what should you do if you, if you reach out to someone and hire someone and are working with them and you start to lose faith or you start to feel like you're just a number or you start to feel like they might not know what they're doing, or you start to feel like your philosophies aren't aligning. I hear this quite a bit, you know, I expected one thing from this process and my coach didn't deliver or um, you know this is what was promised and this is what I got and oftentimes I feel like people will ghost their coach meaning they just cut off ties they send an email saying I'm no longer working with you or they even don't even do that um, and they just kind of disappear into the wind and you know I, I have some mixed feelings about that because on the one end, I really don't know what that client has gone through, what that person has gone through. If you, as a client, have repeatedly, you know, tried to reach out to your coach to have a conversation, to to discuss what you're feeling, if you've sent emails with like questions in them that have gone unanswered or ignored, um, if your emails don't get answered for a week or two, I, I don't know that what that means to you and, and how that hurts your heart and how it hurts your soul and, and as a person. Um, it might just break you down to the point where you don't want to deal with it. You know, like we all have our own way of dealing with things and you know, it's just like a relationship, um, like dating and all those things. Like sometimes when people are done, they're just done. There's nothing to talk about. They don't want to be negative. They just want to be done with it and move on with their lives. Um, now is this the approach that I would suggest? No. And here's a few reasons why I have made many mistakes as a coach. I have done things the wrong way. I have, you know, Coaching as a profession is not something that is inherent. No one teaches us how to do this. I didn't go to school to learn how to do what I do. You know, the, the nutrition, the training, all of those things are kind of things you can learn in philosophies, but no one can teach you the mental side of being a coach and dealing with multiple people's personalities, multiple people's expectations. And so the only way I grow as a coach, or I have grown over the last, you know, seven, eight years that I've been doing this full time, is the people that have reached out to me and said to me, I am not happy. You are not doing a good job. I was let down by you. And I'll be honest, those emails are a dagger to my heart. I don't sleep at night when I get those. I, you know, I often don't reply right away, but I definitely take them to heart and have to think about, okay, where did I go wrong? And there's, I've always thought of it this way. There's two ways you can respond as a coach. You can get angry and be like, well, to hell with that person. I'm the best coach ever. And I've done things the right way. And look at all the success I've had. And look how happy these clients are. Um, or you can go, why wasn't I able to reach that person? What am I doing that makes this process difficult for this person? And understanding that sometimes 
no matter how good a client is or how good a coach is, there's just going to be a difference of opinion. And sometimes different coaches have different connections with different clients. And I, that's something I've come to understand. And so what you need to do is speak to your coach. Do not let it go because I want these coaches to have the opportunity to improve. If they don't have the opportunity to improve and they just get angry, we might lose good coaches. Yes, I'm certain there are some coaches that deserve every bit of ghosting that they get or every bit of bashing that they get. But I, might, I myself have had that happen to me. Um, you know, I've had clients just disappear off the map and I couldn't track them down. And then two or three email, two or three years later, they would email me and, and apologize and say why they did it and they felt this. And I'm like, man, I wish you would have told me a couple of years ago. I've changed the way I do things. And I think that's the biggest thing that you need to look for from your coach. Are they open-minded? Are they willing to listen to you? Are they willing to adapt what they're doing to your style, to your philosophy? That's what I've had to learn about this profession, is that my style of coaching has to fit with what they're doing, but I also have to be willing to adapt to what people are looking for. And the more I've done that, the more I've gotten out of this coaching. So if you don't trust your coach, if you think they're bad at their job, as hard as it might be to tell them, let them know, say, hey, you're giving me a meal plan and you're telling me to eat no condiments and no sodium and you're telling me to take a diuretic three, four weeks out from a show. Philosophically, these are things that I've seen from other coaches that are saying not to do that. Can you explain why you do it? Can we have a discussion on why I need to do this? And if their answers don't align with what you want, they're basically going to tell you, okay, we're not a good fit. Let the coach know or possibly the other thing that could happen is these coaches, if they start to get feedback from their clients, like, I don't like the way these things are going, they have the opportunity to start looking inside and thinking, man, maybe I need to change the way I'm doing things. Maybe there's a different approach here that's working. Why are some girls getting on stage feeling good? Why are some people able to lose weight and not be on a, on a a restrictive meal plan, right? Why are some people able to compete and not develop eating disorders and um, overeat and binge post-show for weeks on end? Why are some people able to maintain this lifestyle better than others? I'm still looking for answers. I'm still looking for a way. I have changed my philosophy. I used to be strictly IIFYM. I don't believe in strictly IIFYM anymore or flexible dieting anymore. Now I believe there needs to be a very nice solid structure there. There needs to be a plan. I just don't believe it needs to be restrictive, you know? So these are things I've, I've changed over time, my opinions, and that's through working with people. That's through being surrounded by people that have more experience than me. Like people like Dr. Joe that I look up to, people like Eric Helms, other coaches in the industry like Cliff Wilson that are doing things that make me look at the way I do things and see like, okay, there's some other things going on here. How can I change? And when you do those things, it really helps the process of becoming a better coach. But if I'm never challenged and I'm never pushing those boundaries, if I'm still doing the same things in two years that I'm doing today, I'm probably failing. So there needs to be an evolution and it's your job in some cases. I understand some people have been so burned they just are done with their coaches. But you can help these coaches evolve, okay? And if they're not willing to listen and take that to heart and be open-minded, then maybe they don't need to be coaches and maybe that will help them make that decision as well. I've seen a lot of people get out of the coaching business. Again, this is not a profession that someone can really, really go to school to be a coach. Yes, you can get a degree in psychology. Yes, you can get a degree in exercise physiology. I've taken a lot of classes in these areas. I feel like I'm very well um, prepared to handle this, but I think it's an innate thing within me. I love coaching. I love being involved in the lives of my clients. If you're with a coach that you don't get that feeling from and you're a little disappointed, let them know. When you're looking at a coach, have a phone call with them. Don't just sign up for somebody through email or because you've seen their Instagram. Make sure you get a sense of who they are. Um, I know we can get all excited about signing up with a new coach because, oh my gosh, this person worked with this athlete and that's what I wanna do. But did they really work with them the whole time? Have they only been working with them for a year, six months? Is this athlete really actually using that coach's practices, you gotta dig a little deeper before you make that decision and jump in. And I think that's the, the best way that I've progressed as a coach is that now every one of my clients is a phone call, 
is uh, someone that you know I have a backstory on. Um, and early on, that wasn't the case. Sometimes people would just email me, we'd exchange a questionnaire, ask a couple questions, and we'd be off and running. And I didn't really have a sense. And so that's one thing I've changed over the years too. I no longer just sign people up via the internet. I have to have a phone call. I have to have a discussion. Um, and so that's the evolution that it's been for me, along with other things, as far as nutrition training, all the other things have been evolving. And that's, for me, it's been the tough emails. It's been the tough conversations. It's been the, the competitors crying on my shoulder and being angry with me that has created a change. It's been being at the shows and seeing what the people go through on stage. It's being a competitor myself and seeing what people go through on stage and understanding the process. You know, it's, it's working with moms and dads and, and mothers and brothers and sisters through a fat loss phase and understanding that life comes before fat loss. You need to fit it into your lifestyle. And these are things that I've changed in the way I program, the way I discuss things. These videos have helped me learn more. And so all I would suggest is if you don't trust your coach, have the conversation, at least give them the opportunity to become better. They might not be better for you, but they might be better for the next person. And I firmly believe that the rising tide floats all ships. We as a whole can be better. Okay. We as coaches, we as clients, we as people. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. It's Sunday. I got to get back. My wife is very much about ready to have a baby. So that could happen at any time. And uh, we're going to get some cleaning done and uh, I'll get a video out this week with the footage from this weekend. But thank you for listening. And I uh, hope you guys are having an awesome weekend and I'll talk to you tomorrow.